the Department of Government Efficiency cannot come fast enough. The Pentagon, the single largest expenditure of the U.S. government outside of Social Security and Medicare, over $824 billion, just failed its seventh consecutive audit. The audit, which cost us, by the way, $178 million to conduct, said it was unable to provide sufficient information to auditors to form an opinion. Unable to form an opinion? What do you mean? In other words, they have no idea where billions upon billions upon billions of dollars went. I, I, look, Pentagon, I could have given you a report that says, I don't know anything either for $50 million. Well, I mean, what a bargain, right? And, and the CFO of the Pentagon, the undersecretary, came out and tried to defend this. He said, quote, the number of entities we have clean options in is slightly over half. If someone had a report card that is half good and half not good, I don't know if the, you call that student or the report card a failure. We have made progress, and we need to get better and faster to further accelerate remediation efforts towards achieving the 2028 DOD-wide goal. What? A 50% score? That's failing in any school anywhere is since the history of ever. When, when you are playing with my tax dollars, you should have 100% accountability. And the fact that this is the seventh consecutive one that you failed, seven of these audits have cost the U.S. taxpayers over a billion cumulative dollars. And they can't pass any. And we, we spend more than the next 25 countries combined on defense. This graph just shows a few of them. And I found myself agreeing with this Democrat from 2020. $140 billion for the Pentagon is a lot of money, and too much of it gets waste, uh, wasted on fraud, cost overruns, and outside contractors. We are literally flushing money down a drain, and I mean literally. Due to the design flaw on the new $13 billion Ford-class aircraft carrier, we are spending $400,000 on specialized acids every time we have to flush and unclog the toilets. We spent billions on an amphibious vehicle that sinks due to its own weight. And don't even mention the $10,000 seat toilet covers. $10,000 on a toilet seat. He, he has, in fact, though, voted against almost all of America's defense budget. But he turned around and voted for every single Ukraine funding bill. So shut up. Look, th this should not be hard. Apply the same standard that is applied to we the people. The Pentagon got notice that they failed the seventh audit and were like, meh, oh well. Why? Because nothing happened when they failed in the first six. Who went to jail? No one. You, you guys just hired 87,000 plus IRS agents to make sure I don't Venmo someone over $600. This, that, that little escapade of those agents cost taxpayers $80 billion in expansion costs. They only recouped $1.3 billion in revenue on behalf of that. I mean, this is government math for you. <laughs> Hell, there's, there's 150,000 federal employees as of today who owe more than $1.5 in back taxes. Why don't they start there? Better yet, that entire new IRS budget is the value of the equipment that we just left behind in Afghanistan. Democrats didn't bend an eye. They, the, the same fake fiscal hawks that are whining about, like, the cost of deporting illegal immigrants that, that by the way, shouldn't be here in the first place, are somehow making the same people taking huge donations from defense contractors and continuously voting for these near trillion dollar bills and budgets that go up every year. The sums of money we are talking about here is outrageous. I mean, it is like cosmically high. This is all prior to this audit. And if you factor in the last six failed audits, the Pentagon can't account for $3.8 trillion in assets. $3.8 trillion. This means that's two-thirds of the nation's entire annual budget. Half of BlackRock, the world's largest financial entity, half of their entire net assets. They just, they just lost it. The Pentagon has no idea where it went for the last six years. Jesus. And yet, no reforms have been made. No one has gone to jail. No one has lost their job. And nothing has been done to safeguard the American public's hard-earned money. This pisses me off to no end. You wonder why 52% of the country voted for the Department of Government Efficiency? That's why. Because if you were to drop nine zeros off the number the Pentagon lost, make it $3,800,
you or I, if we were unable to account for that and we were audited by the IRS because of it, you know what would happen to us? We would go to jail or at a bare minimum face stiff penalties. In fact, the standard applied to us versus those who steal our money via taxation is abhorrent. Almost a year ago, I raised this very concern about what you and I have to abide by to stay out of jail. Our federal tax code is 2,600 pages, 400 pages longer than the unabridged version of the Webster Dictionary. But if you read that tax law cover to cover and you did your taxes solely based on that, you'd probably go to jail. Why? Because that does not include the over 9,000 pages of additional IRS regulations that were never passed into law, but rather written by some bureaucrat sitting in his office that we still have to abide by. Congress never passed that. But hold up. Because if you somehow misinterpret, forget about, or miss just one aspect of any of those nearly 5 million words in those documents, you might need to defend yourself in an audit. Your lawyer, your accountant, maybe even you, might have to review an additional 70,000 pages of tax law and precedent pertaining to any other part of the words that you may have honestly just missed. Yep, and you'd have to pay for your accountant or your lawyer all out of your own pocket. So why does that not apply to anyone at the Pentagon? None of them. Nobody. This is simple. The Pentagon got $824 billion last year. It was split into these departments. What I believe the audit was divided up into 28 different audit sections. Follow every dollar. Ask the person responsible for whatever department where my money went. And if they can't tell you, throw them in jail. And when the next person doesn't know, throw them in jail too. And you do that until you can get some person, one person who knows where the hell the money went. They didn't do that. These audit firms didn't do that. What, I mean, what did we just pay these independent accounting firms $178 million for them? I'd claw that money back too. Someone is responsible for this money. Someone knows where it went. They just don't want to tell you. And, and just shrugging your shoulders and saying, meh, I don't know where it went. That is not an answer. I mean, imagine if I did that to the IRS. It would end either in me in jail or a gunfight. Str straight to jail. They, they, should, they should have asked, oh, hey, this military contractor posed a 4,000% profit margin. Why? Straight up fraud. Claw that money back. Oh, the $1.7 trillion F-35, it's not ready for combat, and it's nearly 50% over budget? Well, the American people would like their money back too bad. I got an idea. Walk around to the over 600, there are 600,000 completely redundant civilian employee contra co employer contractors, but they're in the Pentagon. And just ask them, ask every single one of them in one sentence or less, what would you say you do here? And then, if they can actually have an answer to that, ask them to show you the product of the action that they just told you in the last week. 90% of them will give you the same shrug they just gave the auditors last week. Why is Lockheed Martin reporting $8 billion in profit? Profit! And why is their CEO making 500 times the average compensation of the entry-level enlisted guy on the battlefield that Lockheed is outfooting? He's not getting shot at, they are. Folks, I lived in this money pit for nine years of my life as a SEAL. I, I know how bad this is. Nothing in our government functions. That is what this election was about. It was a bunch of people, like you and me, sitting around saying, we are so tired of paying for all this trash. But the tab is coming due, and I am here for the massive cuts that are incoming. He loves the Constitution. He fights for what's right. He hates the bad guys. He's a freedom warrior. He's your freedom warrior. Watch Carl Higby every weekday on Newsmax.